Did that uh, oh. elevator music come through? Uh, yes, I heard that. All right. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Um, no intro video tonight, but um, we have an ITSL match tonight instead of our normal uh, Team Illinois games. Uh, Jeremy, member of Team Illinois, whose side we'll be watching, is playing uh, David DiCarlo, who is currently the second-ranked player um, in the Calgary conference of the ITSL. He's having a very good season, only has one loss so far. And uh, I am joined here by uh, Josiah Emery. Josiah, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm uh, currently putting <clears throat> Jeremy's hand into uh, the David Mick website uh, app, and uh, then we'll let it rip. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, Olympic Games makes sense. He really doesn't have... A better headline. I mean, special relationship would have been okay. He was okay, but um, but he gets the two VPs out of that, and you're... yeah, definitely not ideal. Yeah, but could have been worse. All right. Uh, wonder if this is going to go to Iran. Uh, I would. Well, let's see. Yes, and he rolls a nice six. Excellent. Okay, so that's duck and cover. So I'm thinking, um, I mean, definitely, definitely not going to coup back with it at three. No, no, you, you can't uh, chance that he has Middle East scoring. Um, so... I think having seen Zima would do it a bunch of times, probably Malaysia, two in Egypt, one in Lebanon. Uh, or just Egypt, Lebanon, or uh, Egypt, Malaysia, um, which is oh, okay. looks like he's going to do. Um, he does have four ops, so he could have gone both. But if he does get cooed out of Egypt, he can still move into Lebanon next AR. Right on. Because Suez is in his hand, so he knows there's not a threat there of getting wiped out. Right. And here's another coup. Oh, but he goes for Panama. And rolls a one. Dang. What, what do you think? That must be to um, set up uh, defectors, right? If you, you're rushing to get um, the DEF CON down so quickly? Uh, yeah, decal, um, I think, I mean, that does make sense. Oh, that's what I meant, sorry. Yeah, I, it also could be that he didn't want to give Jeremy Milops. Um, the only way Jeremy can get Milops now is if he is Indopak, which we know he doesn't have. Because if he had decal, he might have played it right there instead of cooing. And then given Jeremy the decision to either fix things or coup. Oh, it's interesting that uh, Europe uh, scoring was uh, headlined over Nasser. Yeah, that is interesting. He must have a really poor hand. Because um, Europe, he could have found a spot to drop that. Like, Because it's rare for U.S. players to fill up France early in turn one. So I'm sure he could have found some tempo to drop Europe later. Especially with duck and cover in his hand. I mean, I, here I'm talking about a player who's currently 10-1 and one in the ITSL. Like, I know what I'm talking about. But, um, but yeah. That, yeah that we we does, can be lenient on ourselves. Uh. <laughs> that, uh, that does kind of indicate uh, maybe a weak hand, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely happy to, as the U.S., I'm, I'm very happy to uh, have access to Lao Cambodia. Uh, mm -hmm. But on turn one, that's fantastic. Already be in Thailand. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised uh, Jeremy hasn't played Warsaw yet, and we haven't seen NATO. It's always a good oh, idea yeah. to play Warsaw before NATO. And he used a three op earlier. I think he used EU earlier. So Fidel was spaced, right? Yes. I guess um, 
I mean, sometimes you use Fidel uh, to try to corner them and into CIA, like having trouble problems with CIA. Yeah, I I wouldn't mind. I mean, he wanted to get to space first, which I understand, but I mean, Suez could have been a decent space guard too. <clears throat> it looks like Jeremy was right on his read about Middle East scoring. Yes. That was a good read. And that also surprises me about David not headlining Nasser, but again, well, okay, now we know we had at least two scoring cards, though. So. Yeah, when, whenever I have two scoring cards, I always want to headline one. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your tempo for the whole turn is yeah. really bad. So and maybe, then if your opponent gets mm -hmm. a whiff of it, they can really pressure you into giving them, like, a domination. Yeah, so it makes more sense now. Yeah, there are always things that, like, your opponent's doing, and you're like, why are they doing that? And then when you see the whole play hand play out, you're like, oh, okay, that's why they were doing that. That was a pretty quick D-stall. Wasn't yeah. it take too long on that one? Uh, I don't know if I would f put everything in France at this point. I think he could have put three in France and maybe one Colombia. Yeah, I like that because, you know, baiting them into an op war in France is good for the U.S. Oh, because yeah. the Soviets have the access, right? Mm -hmm. So if the Soviets want to start fighting over France, that's less influence they're putting into Brazil and Argentina. So Exactly, I, I, and we don't know where Truman is. So that's always, unless you're holding Truman as the Soviet player, it's always a risk to try an ops war in France. Right. Good point. Okay, so that went to Korea and oh, and Pakistan. All right, he's. I think he's got to go Colombia here. So he went Colombia. Where's the Columbia Berm, it looks like, is being considered. Well, where'd the third op go? Because he's under containment. Oh. Wait. France. Oh, France. Yeah, he put another in France. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And I'll just um, concentrate on updating the hand for the moment. Asia domination seems like a bridge too far. Um, and he could get dominated if we see a Vietnam, Vietnam. Or wait, no, Vietnam won't do it, will it? Oh, no. Well. But Decal could. Right. Going into uh, Indonesia and Laos. Yeah. So, Asia headline might be a bit of a risk, but I don't know what's better. I mean, he still has the... We haven't seen defectors, right? So... Yeah, but there's... So the threat of defectors could mm -hmm. keep decal um, <clears throat> out of the hypothetical. No, oh, there it is. No, <laughs> no fear. I mean, it could be that he has defectors in his hand. Very, very good point. In fact, actually, yeah, I would, I would almost predict that at this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I could see him risking it, even if he ha doesn't have defectors, given that he already got D-style. Um, well, yeah, it is a pretty big risk. Either way, Jeremy's very happy that he didn't have lineage scoring. Yes. So I'm curious to see what David's going to do, if he's going to place ops or if he's going to take his coup. He's going to take his coup. And roll a four. Wow, for um, just turn two, we are seeing so much action in the mid-war region. Yeah. I mean, uh, seven, 
looking like eight influence in the mid war regions like mm -hmm. just seems like a yeah. lot <laughs> for turn two all right i like that what do you think about just taking india though um we don't know where Indopec is, so I don't know if I'd risk that. At, at this point, he's got a pretty good shot of blocking Asia domination. Right. So I, I don't think I'd risk taking India. I think I, I like moving into Venezuela there. Oh, there's defectors. But these kinds of discussions are always like splitting hairs, but I wonder what the uh, advantage of uh, Bulgaria is over um, just putting a second in like Yugoslavia or maybe even an, one in Austria. Huh, yeah. Yeah, actually, like, especially with a really good player, I'd be curious, like, why he would go Bulgaria there. Because, yeah, I think I might not do that either. I may, I might just not have played a lot of games, but this I have never seen this much influence in South America on turn two. Yeah, I mean, it is a lot. I mean, you got to turn 1D style. But, yeah, the fact that Jeremy got in there too. But it's not like there are really, like, there aren't many predominant battlegrounds that haven't been filled up besides South Korea. Yeah, well, and we saw, I mean, Middle East and Europe got scored right away. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, so it's like... So, it's and Asia sense. looks like it'll probably be a draw, so makes sense that they're kind of fighting it out um, over in the Americas. I liked what he did there. I would maybe, instead of putting two in Panama, maybe put one in Angola to get it kind of get something going in Africa. That's the only region for Jeremy that looks really bad right now. Yeah, and it might also be good to get. Um, oh, you probably meant Algeria, right? Oh, I did. Yeah, did I say Angola okay, okay, instead? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I completely agree. One, just one into Algeria for access to Saharan states, I think, mm -hmm. is really good. Uh, I didn't like India. I liked what he was doing earlier better. Like, what does India get you? Like, yeah, it, once Indonesia goes red, I feel like the dream of uh, dominating Asia is pretty dead. Yeah, and and it's not like David has a good shot at getting domination because Jeremy has access to so many non-battlegrounds. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, I, I much prefer moving into Panama. Because now you can't. Well... You can, just not as easily. Right. Well, that's a reason not to put the last Comic-Con influence in. Yeah, um, yep, nope. that makes sense now. See, I don't... Uh... Okay, I see what he's trying to do now. He's trying to sneak off a domination. It's risky, but it might pay off for him. Yeah. Now, oh, that's a good point. 
Yeah, so even if the war succeeds, David won't have domination. So actually, I really like this play now. I totally take back what I was saying before. This is fantastic. <laughs> Let's go. Let's see. Let's see if it happens. It's a or decent... will David uh, pick up uh, on what Jeremy's laying down? I mean, he needs three. I, I don't think he... Well, unless he plays the China card. You could, like, flip Lao and take Vietnam? Yeah. He could also straight up take uh, Japan. Right. USJDF is in the mm. discard. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how David's going to respond to this. Because there's a good chance he has one of those wars, but... If he misses on it, that's a huge miss, and we're going to find out right now. Oh! So close. Dang. Still. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I liked, you, I liked him taking that, that chance. Um, what is that called? Uh, uh, the, the EV on that play was good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really liked him trying to go for domination. It was really aggressive. I don't think I would have done that, but I like it. All right. Wins the space race. I like that. Oh, he's going to win both. He had it all. Wow. All right. Well, that one fails. The Democratic uh, people of South Korea breathe a sigh of relief. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like the Brazil break. Yeah, this is a great way to have a lot of tempo moving into turn three. Mm -hmm. And Suez was spaced. Yeah. So we've got blockade, CIA, five-year plan. Uh, we do have purge in David's hand. And David knows that Jeremy has blockade. So I'm anticipating we get a purge headline here. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing purge, Romanian abdication, UN intervention, Marshall Plan, and De Gaulle. Yeah, that sounds right. I'm thinking uh, when I stream games in the future, I might have a little bubble in the corner. Uh, for, like, known opponent's cards. Hmm, yeah. Actually, I think I've seen people do that before with that website. Um, I'm trying to think of who's done that. But... Are you do you, are you ambivalent to it as a viewer, or do you think it would enhance the experience? Uh, well, I think it helps. All right, well, I'll, take, I'll definitely give that a shot. Yeah, right now I've just uh, uploaded two matches on YouTube, but I'm hoping to do a lot more and uh, eventually uh, start streaming games live on Twitch, maybe. Nice. Yeah, that's, we've had so many new Twilight Struggle streamers last couple of years. It's been fun. Yeah, the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. So I like the uh, CNS headline. Yeah, I I was about to say I could see the case for CIA because it's not going to come back till turn seven. You know you're probably getting purged, and it helps to kind of see what you're up against. Point. Yeah, that's actually a great point. How CIA uh, for the U.S. is worlds different on turn two versus turn three. Yeah, yeah. I would not. I would. I shouldn't say I would not, but I would very rarely event it before turn three 
So the other known cards are special EEU and NATO. NATO. Ouch. All right. Well, luckily, uh, he still has access, but David can just step into Cameroon here and get to Zaire first if he wants to. We'll see if he does that. Because Jeremy could also coo him out of there. Right, but then he's giving up mill ops. Oh, no, well, there is Columbia. There, there's, so yeah, there's an option for mill ops anyway, so I don't think it's that much of a worry. So, you got a whole blockade. I mean... You're going to give up Japan? You, you could give up U.S. Japan. I don't know if you want to. Then you have, like, I mean, you're already shy on ops this turn. If you give up U.S. Japan with blockade, like... Yeah, it's a, this is a tough hand if you do that. Yeah, you're looking at, like, uh, I think, like, seven or eight ops, and that's, like, letting socialists go off. Yeah. Well, no, you. I think you, you can space. Space Oh, and you actually, space you you're guaranteed to get double space because you have captured Nazi. So you can space Suez and socialist. Oh yeah, right on. That's nice. Some good compensation there mm -hmm. for yeah, like uh, under purge. All right, so it gives up EU. I would have taken. I would have taken out the third from Iran, and left one in uh, the European battlegrounds. Oh yeah, that's interesting that he didn't take out of there. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, because what are those at right now? Oh, he got Warsaw and Comic Con, so they're doing okay. But he couldn't have known that uh... at the time. Because the U.S. doesn't have adjacency to Iran, and, like, I just... It's hard to imagine a grain sales coup going there. Yeah. Even if not two, like... I don't know about the rush to space. I, I think he should have moved to Angola first. I mean, he succeeded, so it's good, but... I wonder if David is considering breaking Venezuela... Uh... Oh, no, it looks like we're going to see a fight for France. Yep, and he's definitely going to hold blockade now. <laughs> I mean, it's a good move from David. He doesn't know that Jeremy's holding the four up. I guess it's also, yeah, it is worth... Um differentiating between the known and unknown cards mm -hmm. in Jeremy's hand. Uh, so I believe blockade is known. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely known. I think at this point, is Cambridge 5 the only unknown card? I, I believe you're right. Yeah, if I um, if I'm Jeremy here, I, I'm praying that uh, Venezuela survives this turn. It might not, because we know David has two more four ops he can play. So if he wants Venezuela, it's his. That may be what he's considering. I wonder what else he could be looking at right now. Yeah, there really isn't much impetus mm -hmm. to fill up the Middle East. Yeah. Special relationship was in David's hand, right? Yes. We know from CIA. Yeah. 
wonder if five-year plan is worth eventing. Well, maybe not now. Wow, West Germany. Hmm. Well, with an overprotected France, it's your only option of breaking Europe. Yeah. Is, uh, is gone. Yeah. He's gone. So what's still in his hand? He's NATO, um, Romanians. Oh, and Romanian. Special. All right, Romanian was what I forgot. Okay, so obviously playing special first. So David won't be able to take Germany this turn, but they'll get pretty close. Right, and then, like, for instance, if he uh, coups Venezuela uh, and doesn't get enough to flip it, uh, Jeremy will then have to decide whether he wants to repair West Germany or Venezuela. So mm -hmm. even if he can't take West Germany, he's still definitely going to profit from it being uncontrolled at the end of the turn. Oh, yeah. There it is. All right, got to finish up with spacing two straight ARs. The donkey is in space, and uh, <laughs> what's in the... <laughs> they never sent a donkey into space. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was a dog. <laughs> oh, he's going to coo here for his millops. Makes sense. All right, and you got a space socialist. So that's actually some good compensation for losing... Uh, the Venezuela walk there is that you can at least find some mill ops later on in the game in Colombia. VOA is nice to see. Especially with only two in Chile, uh, you completely wipe them out. Yeah. Uh, the southern tip of South America. That's why I love getting three in Venezuela and or mm -hmm. three in Chile. Your voice proof. Yep. Or Chile, I apologize. Uh. <laughs> Oops. And oh, I, there are so many things I'm sure I've mispronounced. To, I, I don't think anyone's going to jump on you about that. Um, I'm curious though what you headline here, because BOA is obviously good. Duck and cover. Protects Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sorry. Or, Nigeria's Soviet. No, yeah. Oh, I don't think you, want you have to. headline peak. So <laughs> do not headline duck and cover. <laughs> yeah, definitely do not. So there won't be an opening coup. So this means that probably we're going to see some more influence in West Germany on the first action round. Yeah, which you can't really do much about. But you can voice and do something about South America. Right. And um, rear guards is going to be really good now. Yeah. Yeah, with with rear guards, you're really wishing uh, that you could take out of Nigeria and all four out of South America. Yeah. But yeah, I think you got to go. Well, I guess Nigeria. Hmm. Yeah, maybe Nigeria isn't that important. All right, rear guards make sense. This might... The, the only thing that worries me with rear guards is David's going to end up taking Chile. And your voice isn't going to be quite as effective. 
Yeah, we'll see if David uh, hmm. finds the the path here to uh, dominating South America, which is definitely a third in Chile. It's an interesting. The Saharan states. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. I, I get... guess the idea is is that you're going to be realigning. Yeah. Because then know. it's like, yeah, you've got a... Nigeria's a, a decent secondary target. But then... Since DEFCON's already at two... Yeah, you really don't have a great hand for realigning. So I don't know... Or maybe he's just really trying to convince David not to put a third into Chile. Oh, jeez. <laughs> right back at him. All right. Not the one. So this might be a bit of a meany question, but uh, are you eventing the Pope? Um... Oh, I'm definitely eventing it at some point. Are you saying now? Oh, not I mean this turn. Oh, yeah. 100% you're, you're eventing the Pope this turn. Okay. Isn't there, like, eight influence in Poland, though? <laughs> no, because I think EU got evented. That's right, that's right. Wish you would scroll up just a little bit, but it's... Yeah, I was thinking about this. Yeah, if you, mm -hmm. if you don't go for... Um... South America, then yeah. Panama's, a, Panama's great a great target. Yep. Especially with Panama Canal returned in your hand. Mm hmm. I wonder, yeah, that might have made the difference in the, the decision tree. So, what are you going to do with blockade here? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, salt negotiation for uh, a really good Soviet card and then discard it? <laughs> no, That's not a bad idea. Well, no, maybe it is. But Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess you could salt and hold it another turn. Yeah. And you could salt for VOA. Ooh, great point. Yeah, that would be juicy. Okay, so, yeah, how would... David Vest respond to that, I wonder. I mean, one goes into Chile, do you maybe... Well, you'd have to do it late. So David really doesn't have a chance to respond, but I'm assuming Chile gets filled up this turn regardless. Maybe oh my have... gosh. He has all the Africa events this turn. Yeah. And uh, I won't be able to tell you... Uh half of david's hand on uh, turn seven unfortunately i've lost track of things that's okay it it happens but at least this way i'll be able to focus more on the game yeah that, that's why i don't try to track cards when i'm commenting on a game i just it, it's for whatever reason it's much harder than when you're playing your own game well i appreciate the audience humoring us uh <laughs> while i gave it a shot <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I, I love I love this uh you know like completely filled up South America and, and like very empty uh Middle East. It's, it's very different, I like mm -hmm. it. Alright, I like the Columbia move. Oh, I don't like the one. You can see Che here. No, just a normal coup. Oh, and then another one. Hmm. Yeah, but you, you, you have to keep going for this. You can't get realigned out of Venezuela. Yeah, it's tricky. You're running out of cards to use, though. Oh, wow. there we go. Six ops worth of coups going, <laughs> uh, from the U.S. alone. 
Colombia is the center of the world tonight. Yeah, I mean that it's it was very important. So definitely understand both players cooing. He's not cooing that back. No. Ah, that hurts. Yeah, although I doubt. Yeah, Jeremy has some obligations, so he doesn't have time to realign right now. So I wonder if you just, I, I, I don't think you event Panama anymore. I think you just no. don't stay in the deck. Yeah, I agree. Because if you event it, it's going to be a nice coup target. Although Zaire is a pretty nice coup target too. Yeah, and also just like, you can get you can get one influence into Panama with it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, maybe you lose it a little bit later, but having that event being redrawn by the Soviets just seems like uh, some good potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that, breaking the Africa domination. Rolling just enough. Right, I feel like that's probably a long-term play. I don't think that David has Africa's score. No, I, I agree, he doesn't, but he would have scored it a while ago. Wow, look at all these three ops cooing uh, one stabs. I almost, I'm always trying to just use like a two two op at the most to uh, coo a one stability country. Typically I do. I, I've started to come around to the idea that if it's a really important coup to use maybe an extra op or two. Um, although that, the coup in Saharan States, I don't know if that was a really important coup, but I mean, he used the card he had, so... All right, so uh, are we going to see nuclear subs? <laughs> um, Some missiles attached to dolphins, maybe. Well, yeah, nuclear subs. Can... Look at, you, you got uh, Nigeria, Algeria. Yeah, oh yeah, nuclear subs can make it rain in Africa. Um, Although, yeah, you're not going to be going into Brazil after for the third target now i would maybe i'm i'd consider bear trap because a great option although i feel like it's just as good um as a final action round oh i prefer it as a final action round okay, actually right but um with lads do you think lads hmm. is um suggesting abm maybe because I'm not, uh, yeah, I think I'm missing something here with the lads. It yeah. could just be that there wasn't a, a better option. That that very well could be. Yeah, I kind of like Bear Trap because nuclear subs, if you headline it, you take your coup and then he drops Africa. Um, with Bear Trap, you get your coup. You protect. Venezuela. Oh, right, right. Yeah, Africa could just be scored at, on the mm. first action round in response to uh, subs. Good point. Okay, so you got two action rounds in a row. What do you do? Oh, wait. Oh, no, he succeeded that, right? Oh, um, sorry. My mistake. Oh, okay. I, I had to double check. I'm like, oh, wait, I thought... All right. Yeah, so he got rid of Kennedy... Bear trap like the space race you want to roll though. Um. Yeah, I get why he reached for a three up there, but given the ops he has, I, I might have been a little more. And the thing about it, the thing that always makes me wince about it is that you're not really getting anything out of that third mill op except for mm -hmm. oh, arms race could be a consideration. Oh, maybe that's, maybe that's what he, he was for. thinking. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he, he said it in the chat to us, but looks like he's going to be holding blockade again. Aye, aye, aye. The 
the Pope being put in his place at the moment. <laughs> Part of me wants to uh, get a guy into Panama, but with Colombia at six, you really don't have to worry. So yeah, I, I know Lads is active, but yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about rushing into Panama. Although he has the scoring, so you'd like to get some VPs out of it. All right. <laughs> oh, he didn't confirm. Uh, I was premature with the... Oh. It's, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, I know you have a couple YouTube videos up, but this is your streaming debut, right? It is. Okay. Proud to do it on your channel, Derek. Well, we... Uh... We're a great farm system. Uh, Justin Abramson, the uh, voice of Twilight Struggle, started, uh, or I think, I'm pretty sure his first Twilight Struggle commentary was with us. Nice. But he was a pro before joining us, so he, uh, we, we just gave him a platform to show off. Right, yeah, I, he uh, was announcing horse races before? I think uh, football. Was? <laughs> right on. That makes more sense. <laughs> Just uh, spinning wheels on the clock, but you know mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta think things through. Yeah. Yeah, we... hmm, I wonder what red cards Jeremy's talking about there. I guess there's Quagmire, right? Yeah, Liberation's out there. OPEC, Cultural Revolution, Brezhnev. Um, OPEC's not Muslim. Bad, Yeah, OPEC's fine right now. Um, Allende's not really a big deal. Yeah, I kind of fear the neutral events more than the Soviets yeah. at the moment. Yeah, but now that I look at it, a lot of the blue events are gone. Like, OAS is out there, Sadat's out there. We already saw puppets get spaced, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so still got an opportunity to arms race here. Not going to go to Panama for the extra point in Central America. That seems fine. Yeah, he really doesn't have the ops to do much more there. If the deck is red, then our man seems great. Yeah, that might be worth the event. I'd be a little worried about Muslim right now. Well, but. when David reaches for mill ops, those lads might just make the difference. You just got to put a four off mm -hmm. into Columbia. <laughs> right? Oh, just a one. But, yeah. Oh, and just one mill op. Okay. Oh, so oh. you know what? He's probably going to do it again. Okay, so lads, lads doesn't affect the mill ops. It just affects the roll. Yeah. I always forget that. That rarely does that come into play. So do you play South African on rest this turn, or do you play the China card? Well, since Africa isn't scored, <clears throat> if you can take South Africa and Botswana, um, you're setting up a decent domination for the future, assuming that you know Zaire holds. Yeah. And maybe that is a bridge too far. Hmm, okay, so he gets a free liberation. One small step is gone. Um, yeah, definitely. Discard one small step for sure. ABM? Um, yeah. yeah, it's really hard to say who 
benefits from it more. Yeah. Board. I guess be, with Thailand being uh, held by the U.S., maybe discarding ABM is good. Yeah. I mean, we still haven't seen any of the... Well, we just saw ABM, but neither players had any of the mid-war power cards yet. We haven't seen Junta or Rush War yet. Rush War, yeah. And we're almost to turn six. Wow, look at that. Columbia got wiped out. Yeah. Lads did some work. Yeah, Middle East is looking pretty bad. Well, if Brian Reynolds has taught me any, anything, you know, all you need is one guy in Lebanon. And <laughs> Oh, he was one of the first Twilight Struggle YouTubers I watched. And some of our viewers might be interested to know that he was uh, a developer on a pretty awesome game called uh, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. Oh my god, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh wow. I loved that game. I played the Me heck too. out of that. The, so the flavor is amazing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Uruguay is a great play here. Threatening to realign Brazil and maybe poke Argentina. Yeah. Okay, OPEC for the event makes sense. I mean, I think you take a stab at some realigns. Or you place... Oh, I guess you could take domination in Africa. Oh, no, you can't. Because of country count. Hmm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't like the double break. Of doing both. I think you do one or the other. Yeah, I, I would probably go Argentina. Oh, North Korea. There you go. Get the value. Yeah, That's I guess Asia isn't points. scored yet. So, yeah, actually, I think I like this better. Korean War has been invented, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has. No, I really don't like the double break. And yeah, because I it. feel like this yeah. is giving your opponent, like, more agency. Yeah. Like, they can decide what's more important to them. No, if you're going to break, I think you break one of them. Right, and in general, I just think that, like, mm -hmm. these kind of, like, very um, diverse plays uh, just kind of let your opponent decide what's important to them instead of you know making a direct move you d you're deciding what's important to you now but i guess there's flexibility in it right yeah there is there is but it's just it not as efficient like you could have junta might pay off might make this play pay off in spades though if you can just uh you know put two in argentina and start realigning brazil or vice versa yeah but you probably want a coup though to prevent a coup in africa great point oh boy Oof, with Middle East scoring in hand, you hate to see it. Yikes, and you can't really do anything about it. No, no Sadat, no Camp David. You don't even have a guy in Tunisia or Sudan, yeah. Oh, well, you, you'll be in Israel still, though. Yeah. Just, you just hate to see it. Yeah, I think you put into Argentina here and hope for a good coup on Brazil to maybe uh, threaten domination there, even though you don't have the scoring. At least have some sort of threat, so maybe you can get Middle East out before it's even worse. And uh, I just want to point out that uh, Jeremy was uh, definitely correct to space Fidel instead of trying to uh, apply pressure with CIA, because here we see the Fidel redraw, and it's very likely that the Soviets, uh, barring a successful liberation theology, they're not going to be taking Cuba this game. Uh, well, he can't space Fidel, though. Oh, he can't space Fidel because he, because of where he's on in the space track. I yeah, see. yeah. Oh, my gosh, and with blockade? Oh, that's <laughs> he's going to hold blockade again. <laughs> he's been holding it since turn three. And David knows it's in his hand. That's rough. 
Okay. The break to prevent uh, realign and prevent, lowers the amount of points from uh, yep. that uh, delightful event, Alliance for Progress. Yeah, I think it just fixed that. So then maybe you break Venezuela and move into Colombia? As David? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely going to do that. You still got to find time to score the Middle East. I know. This is a rough hand. Where'd he end up putting the second up? I was actually trying to figure out how much Middle East is going to score for us. So I didn't yeah. see. Uh-oh. Just gets it. All right. I think you got to score Middle East before it gets worse. It's going to be bad. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't see any way to improve on the Middle East that isn't just, like, dumping ops yeah. into a, a bottomless I mean, well. You can break into Egypt, but then he's going to take right. Libya. Yeah, he just has an ability to respond to every play more efficiently. Right. And so, is uh, yeah, I think... Uh, th is that the first time the scoring track has gone red? There might have been a time in the early war, very early on, where it was red. Like, maybe just a VP or two. Mm -hmm. But it's been a while. Let's see. You also want to get some mill ops. I guess that'll be coming from... Uh, Saharan states. Which is good, because Africa is on a score. Right? Yeah, you need to get domination in Africa. you got to pull off a domination before things get a lot worse. Okay, yeah, I like that. Arab Israeli is actually pretty annoying here. Because if that succeeds, you just have that one influence in Lebanon... Yeah, and at that point, the Soviets, like, I mean, I know that there's Marine barracks bombing down the line, but, like, it's hard to resist the temptation to just get zero presence for the U.S. Yeah. Well, I guess at that point, the U.S. just moves into Jordan, probably. So, never mind that. And, of course, Middle East has already scored. So we're not going to see that. Yeah, so David might be wondering, like, if Jeremy has Africa scoring or not this turn. Although he doesn't seem too pressed on about it. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen Cultural Revolution yet, so David might just be taking the China card back soon. Yeah, that's... Uh... Definitely one part of the game that I've yet to master is the the dance of the <laughs> China events. Oh, so close. And the Soviets already had their mill off, so that was pretty painless. Yep. But yeah, I guess uh, that could have uh, spelled control, come to think, down the line. Oh, yeah. And there are those mill ops. Mm -hmm. Go get them. That's not how you do it. Yeah.
Oh, you're right. There it is. I think you have to overprotect Korea here. Um, because breaking that would get David. Oh my gosh, horrible rolls. Yeah, that really hurts. And also, just like having to go from one mil op to four, so the inefficiency of it. Mm -hmm. Hurts me at death on too. Although he needed the three op to succeed on that, but true, yeah. And now he is dominating. He does Africa. have domination in Africa, so maybe that's enough of a threat that David won't pull any shenanigans in Asia. Um, Quagmire for influence. You don't see that uh, all the time. It, fairly rare in my book. Yeah. This is an interesting call here if you coup South America to stop that domination or if you coup in Africa to get your own domination. Right, and then the South uh, uh, America comes with uh, Panama as well. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like Colombia for that reason. Oh, but... Vietnam gets some Asia domination, so he can't coup because he'd be giving up Asia. Uh, um, yeah, that that didn't turn out great. And uh, with uh, CIA removed from the game, uh, the likelihood of winning on uh, DEFCON suicides is significantly lower. Mm -hmm. Not zero, but definitely lower. Okay, so oh, this could be what the doctor ordered for uh, South America. Yeah, and David has three scorings in his hand. So. Oh, Ask Now would have been nice with those bad scorings. Uh, Defectors is known, I believe. Yes. So there's a bit of a mind game there. But so, I think with uh, three scorings, you really don't have too much choice as far as worrying about defectors. Brezhnev, interesting. Hmm. All right, I'm going to be keeping score on how many extra ops this Brezhnev generates. Oh, it's not going to get much. We know he has three scoring cards. But right, yeah, that's... I don't think he had a better headline. He can't headline... A scoring card with headline peak. Oh yeah, the headline peak. That is, <clears throat> that is a major factor here. You're right. Unfortunately, if David gets pushy in Europe, Ask Not is there. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't know what you headline here. I mean, OAS... Right, like, do you want a defectors when you know that the Brezhnev isn't going to be doing that? Yeah, right. <laughs> I would hold defectors for another... Well, you can't, because you have blockade, and you have to hold that again. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, maybe OAS, and you go into Peru? Cool. That's a cool idea. Oh, well... Yeah, because if you do... No, because if you do that... David's going to take his coup, and then even if you realign him out of Chile, he'll still have domination. Or no, he won't have domination anymore, because of country count. So maybe you just bite the bullet on Europe and get it out of the way. That way you have the most potential for ops uh, on your turn. Yeah, I was thinking, I think that or OAS are really his only choices. And unfortunately, Africa could go bad, too. Because you don't have a way of dropping DEFCON. I mean, I guess Summit could drop DEFCON. 
Yeah, Summit could drop DEF CON, but, there, you're, but you ha you're at a disadvantage with the role. Right, and I doubt David would drop DEF CON with it because he wants a coup in Africa. <clears throat> All right, so they're tied on battlegrounds in Central America. Soviets are up by two from South America, up by one with Africa, up by two with Europe, and up by seven with the Middle East. Uh, yeah, so kitchen debate doesn't happen. No, no, it's not. Yes, you could headline blockade and finally get it out of your hands, but I like Europe. Yeah. There were really weren't a lot of great choices that hand. Like when I think about headlines, um, I, I I think about uh eventing cards that I know I'm not gonna be using for ops. Mm -hmm. And then when you event a a uh scoring card that way you kind of give uh those other cards in your hand the flexibility to be ops if you desperately needed them to be yeah um which usually isn't the case but like there is you know one universe out there where oas found it gets played for ops in africa or something like that for a coup in africa and by by headlining europe you know you're just allowing for that one universe uh to uh mm -hmm. you know have a better option now, I like the Cameroon coup. I was looking at Colombia thinking that was his choice. But Cameroon coup also breaks the domination, but it also sets up potential real lines. Mm. But it'd be interesting to see how David responds to this, because we know he has to score three regions. So I like keeping pressure on him. Look Nigeria. Yeah, and that's the thing. If he fails in a coup in Cameroon, you could flip Nigeria. Yeah, I think he makes the right choice here and scores South America. So, yeah, I think you flip Nigeria. Does that get you domination again? Let's see. Five, four. Yeah, that would get you domination. I like that. I mean, it's probably a good trade for David. But it'll be nice to hopefully get some VPs out of Africa. Absolutely. Uh-oh, maybe oh, not. No. Maybe not. Man, what is this guy's luck? It's over 9,000! <laughs> Too much with this card distribution. Oh, not boy. I'm exaggerating. Hyperbole, hyperbole. That, that's rough. That's very disappointing. Yeah, doesn't seem like there is a path back to Africa domination. No. You can prevent it, but that's about it. So I guess Asia's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jeremy, at this point, I think his only path is DEFCON. He's got to get lucky somehow with that. Yeah, or like the perfect confluence of every single Europe control card. No, not even, because of West Germany. Never mind. Yeah, he Sorry, would need yeah. a lot. Never, yeah, I don't... Yeah, you know, when I said that, I just had assumed that the West Germany was the U.S. As, as it usually is. But, yeah, no, the alternate win conditions don't seem very, especially likely. Yeah. I mean, he could get tear down this wall, get some lucky realigns on Germany, um, be under Chernobyl, and do it that way. David saying, give me that card. Ah. Uh. Or 
Wait, was that missile entity for ops? That was for ops. Yeah, he fixed Korea and went to Panama. Oh, wow. Well, it's good to see Panama getting some attention. It seems yeah, like it's been a while. Colombia was the battleground mm -hmm. for a while, it felt like. And this is exactly why uh, I was saying earlier that it's nice to still have uh, Panama Canal returns still in the deck. Yeah. One point. Okay, I like that. Put some pressure on Panama. Okay, I think you take Panama here with Kennedy. Yeah, I like that too. Then and then OAS seems like a good way to kind of create a threat moving into the next turn. Yeah. Oh, it's a oh, there's space the Sadat. Rajnav value. There's the. <laughs> we found it. Man. Yeah, put at least one to threaten Cuba. Oh no! Now with South America scored. I wouldn't put them both there. Uh, I don't like that. Well, either way, it'll give David some pause on the first action round. I don't think it will. Because it's already scored? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Okay, here's some things. Middle East, and you just gave up Kennedy, because you had to. Um, How could Star Wars help out? Yeah, look at the discard pile, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't much in there, I don't think, yeah. I mean, Brush War is going to be in there eventually. Oh, no. ABM's okay, in there. The oh, Kennedy could get rid of Middle East. Yeah, that's a great idea. I like Kennedy. And finally get rid of Blockade. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the really nice turns are the ones where you're pushing for your own domination rather than trying to scramble out of your opponents. But at least it, there is a good there is a line there. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, maybe he is thinking about that Europe control. Just get insane luck on the real lines. What? But, what does Che do for you? I mean, I guess uh, just gets you Africa domination. Really? Maybe maybe he's thinking that if he takes his coup, Brazil flips, and then he has to worry about real lines. So maybe he wants mm. to. Oh, never mind. Oh, oh no. that is so bad. Yeah. That hurts more than anything. More than the rolling the ones in the Africa coups. Yeah. Missing on brush war is, I think, the most painful thing that can happen to me when I'm playing the game. That it hurts. It hurts. Yeah, so now that Colombia, um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know, because you still, you still want to protect uh, Brazil so that you can hold on to your domination. Mm -hmm. So now that you have Colombia, it's not like you don't want to protect Brazil. You don't need to protect Brazil anymore. It's not like that, so... Yeah, I, I guess Che just was the best option, but mm -hmm. not a great option. All right, that's helpful. So this might be um, too much of a uh, final scoring oriented idea, but I kind of like taking Brazil here. Um, or, you know, then you can tie up South America. 
You do have to worry about Thatcher still, though. Yeah, because so Argentina's just at two, right? Yeah, so maybe maybe since it's four ops to really secure South America, it's not worth it. Because it's already scored. Which is something um, that uh, I'm, I still struggle with, I feel like. Uh, the urge to kind of prioritize final scoring mm -hmm. uh, when there are those uncontrolled battlegrounds still on the board. Oh, I kind of like this. He sort of sets up a threat with central scoring to try to convince David not to take Brazil. I don't know if those two VPs will be enough to convince David to not take Brazil here, though. Especially if he has central scoring. Yeah. I, you know, not to, um, yeah, these guys know what they're doing, but I kind of like just taking Brazil because oh. <laughs> then you have the tempo to um, Star Wars for Kennedy, like you were mm -hmm. saying. That is like a, several action rounds, and you kind of want a more, uh, you want the heat map of the board mm -hmm. to be a cooler. Uh, when you make plays that are, require multiple action rounds. Mm -hmm. Finally gets rid of blockade. Uh... I like this. Yeah. This is um, I like I like that discard. It's it's very speculative, but I think when you're behind, you have oh my to play gosh. speculative. <laughs> Speculation does not pay off with that one, though. No, but it's good game theory. I like it. It is, practice. yeah. I mean, Allende is not a problem. Ortega right now isn't a problem. Liberation's a problem, but you can work around it. Yeah, the uh, position on the space race track has been a, a bit of a thorn in Jeremy's side, it feels like. I mean, although he has, you know, enjoyed some benefits from the headline peak. Yeah, usually you see that happening with the Soviets. Rarely does the U.S. run into so many problems with unspaceable cards. And uh, if people have uh, some thoughts on the matter, there's actually a, a recent Reddit thread on uh, Space 4. And uh, if, you know, definitely... Hop on over to Reddit and let us know your thoughts. Oh my goodness. This is starting to physically hurt. Are you, your sympathetic mirror neurons are firing? Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, he probably doesn't have central. So, yeah, I kind of feel like when you're, um, when things seem this bleak, you got to go for the, like, incredibly unlikely mm -hmm. things. So, hold, tear down, and, uh, yeah. Say, headlining it and then get the best realignment roles in West Germany that you've ever seen in your life. I agree with that. I think you event EU AR7 hold tear down like you said and maybe even get lucky and get Chernobyl uh next turn. Not maybe, it's going to have to happen. It has to. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> But, uh, but that's the thing. When things are bleak, you have to assume that you will get lucky. If you take lines that don't assume you get lucky, then mm -hmm. you won't be able to capitalize on that luck in order to turn it into a comeback. I, I like that. Yeah, because that's really the only shot he has. Um, DEFCON is a very small possibility. but or well, Oh, no, actually. Teardown's in his hand. Star Wars is gone. 
I don't think DEFCON is a possibility anymore. Because grain sales... I mean, David could uh, blunder oh. into DEFCON suicide, but why would he win with headline heat? Yeah. And, well, there's Chernobyl, so... That's unfortunate. Yeah, so now I'm, I'm racing to think, uh, where is the light at the end of the tunnel here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think uh, it's a tunnel anymore. <laughs> it's, it's caved in. Yeah. In any case, uh, both players definitely gave us an excellent game to watch, play their hearts out. Yeah, just unfortunate for Jeremy. It was a really close game for a while there, and just went off the rails. Now, I'm not following the ITSL. Do you happen to know if a win will guarantee David um, a, a win for his division? Uh, it will not. He is currently, he's either tied with, someone else has one loss in his division. I can't remember who it is. Oh, I'm looking at the division right now. What? What's wrong with me? All right. Um, well, I can't. Hang on a second. All right. Well, at least he's, this way. Yeah. Uh, so he's caught, tied with K Chun Law. They both are ten and one. But David. And how many games are left in the season? So they play twenty games. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was like 12 maybe or something. Mm -hmm. So, I know I'm in the minority here, but I'm just going to put this out there that I, for one, um, am surprised when I see players discussing each other's luck so frequently. I see it in almost every single one of Zemowitz's videos. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's it's polite, probably, but I feel like it's a distraction. Um, like a distraction, like, for the player you're playing against, you're saying? or No, like, it's, um, hmm. It's, it's not, it's not relevant to me. Mm -hmm. I, and I know that I'm the minority in this, but I, I think uh, it maybe, and I, I guess I play in a lot of other competitive gaming communities, and sometimes it gets out of hand. And I think that the player base for Twilight Struggle is generally older and people are much more mature, but there is a slippery slope where <laughs> if the subject of luck comes up enough and it becomes almost reflexive to... Um, discuss it after someone beats you, it kind of discredits what they did, right? And uh, Oh, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, I mean, with David, he's saying his luck was good. So I, I think I see what David's doing more often than I see the other way around. Um, sure. Yeah, I do agree with what you're saying. Like, when people complain about, like, oh, I had awful luck this game, like, yeah, that that's the game. Like it's and really I wasn't commenting on this individual interaction at all, but oh, okay. I just yeah. was using it as a frame of reference for what I see as the, the cultural phenomenon overall. Yeah, yeah. I and I agree with that. It, it happens sometimes, but yeah, I don't see it being quite as bad as some other gaming communities, but um yeah, I, I see where you're getting at. I think mostly people just do it out of politeness, yep, but, uh, I, agree. I, 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 yeah. Anyway, well played David. Yep. I mean, that's why he's 10 and one. Well now 11 and one. Um, yeah, I mean, Jeremy did what he could, but, uh, those last couple turns were pretty rough. All right. Any, <laughs> all right. Any, uh, final thoughts or, uh, Final uh, sound effects. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in and for putting up with me. Uh, I look forward to doing this again, if possible. And uh, i just uh, very grateful for both of these players for putting themselves out there so that we can all have uh, something fun to do tonight. All right.
All right. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Have a great night.